Hi guys and welcome to today's video on terminating, recurring and rounding decimals part of a year 8 series of real number. Now hopefully you are enjoying my videos. Oh, oh you're new. Hi, welcome Darren, Mass Guru. Really good to see you. If you're an old hand you know what's about to come. If you haven't already done so and you are new, do me a favour. I have no idea how many people watch these videos. I think there's only seven. If you click subscribe in the corner, then at least I'll know that you have dropped by and watched at least one video. Uh, maybe you'll stay. Above me is MassGuru.com where all the videos are linked by textbook and by chapter and have downloadable notes that are for you. It is absolutely free to sign up. Head on over there and hopefully you'll find it useful. Now, we're going to continue with these videos. I've already looked at sort of adding and subtracting fractions. The last video was looking at um, turning uh, decimals into fractions and fractions into decimals. We looked at a bit of number and place value. But basically, I want to sort of recap about what fractions look like. Now, your calculator is an invaluable thing to use here because you can turn from fractions to decimals really, really easy. I'm fairly sure you can turn from decimals into fractions as well, uh, but that's probably beyond the scope of this video. But what I happen, look at my screen now. If you see behind me, when I put one half into my calculator, what did I get? 0.5. When I put a quarter into my calculator, what did I get? 0.25. When I put an eighth in, 0.125. So already here, we can see these numbers beginning to differ. So 0.5. Now in this number, we say that there is one number after the decimal place. For 0.25, how many numbers are after the decimal place? Two, absolutely. 0.125, how many numbers are after the decimal place? Three. But then fractions aren't normally that nice because we can get some fairly horrendous fractions here. Now I want that one to be 1 on 11. Now what do you notice about the fraction? Well it's 0 0.09090909099. Now interestingly, 1. The reason that 1 is there is your calculator is basically saying, look, I'm going to round it to a certain number of decimal places, right? The, the sequence actually in this situation goes on and on and on. So actually it goes 0, 9, 0, 9, oop, what has happened there? And it, I'm just going to do that again because that looks terrible. So 0, 9, 0, 9, and it just goes on to infinity and beyond. Likewise with our number sequence here, 1 on 9 gives me 0 0.1111111 and again continues to infinity and beyond. Would it be good if we had a way of describing these numbers? We do. Oh my God. Anyone would think I planned this lesson. Let's start off with a terminating decimal. Now, I don't know you guys are even old enough to remember the terminator, but when I was young, and that was some time ago, I'm surprised I can remember it. Um, there was this thing called the terminator. Yes, sent to uh, sent back in time to kill someone. Oh, very cheery, but probably tame in comparison to half the stuff you watch now. What's the point of this? A terminating decimal is one that has a finite number of decimal places. Long word there. Basically, it just ends. All right? It may have seven decimal places, but after that, it stops. So, scrolling up and going back to my previous example here, if we look at the examples that are now highlighted, these are called terminating decimals. They stop. 0 0.5, there is nothing else. 0 0.25, there is nothing else. 0 0.125, there is nothing else after that number. Obviously here and here we have an issue because we know that they go on and on and on so they don't terminate, they don't end. So I'm going to rub that highlighting off so that it doesn't get confused if you download the notes from mathsguru.com. So there we go, so a terminating decimal is something that just has a number like that. Guess what a recurring decimal is? Uh, you saw this coming already, didn't you? There you go. So these uh, are called recurring or reoccurring. All right, well, it's not reoccurring because there's no O in there anyway. But a recurring decimal is one that goes on to infinity and beyond. Absolutely. So 1 on 11, 1 over 9, there are lots and lots of examples of them go on and on and on. And they are recurring decimals. Now, interestingly, we have to find a quick way to be able to write those reoccurring decimals. I can't write. Uh, 0 0.9, uh, sorry, let's try that one again, actually get the right decimal, 0 0.09090909 and dot, 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 because that's not particularly mathematical. And I can't write 0 0.11111111. So what we do have is we have a dot notation and a line notation. Now a dot notation basically means all the numbers after this are identical. So if I go back to my example here of 0 0.11111, 
Is that sequence ever going to change? No, every single number there is a 1. So I can actually write that as 0, 0.1 with a dot above. That one single dot basically means repeating. That's, uh, that is the mathematical notation for a recurring decimal. It just means, so if I gave you 0 0.4 with a dot, that just means 0 0.444444 and so it goes on. Happy? Okay. What's this line notation? Well, obviously 0 0.09090909, we can't keep writing that. I can't put a dot over the nine because if I had 0 0.09 with one dot over the nine, what that would mean is 0 0.099999. That's not what we have. So what we actually do is we place a line over the repeating numbers. So you notice we've got zero and nine just keeps repeating, zero, nine, zero, nine, zero, nine. Well, that's exactly what we do. So if I put a line over this 0 0.09, there you go. That now tells everybody in the world that that is the same as 0 0.09090909. And if I had 0 0.14 reoccurring, then I would write that as 0 0.141414. No, it doesn't have to be just two numbers. If I had 0 0.1372 with a line, that's the same, let's put an equals, a dot, dot, dot there, 0 0.1372, 1372, 1372, and so it goes on. Now, as opposed to using that line notation, we can also use what I call a double dot. So in this situation, 0 0.1372, I could write a dot here and a dot here, and that basically is the same. One dot says start, one dot says finish, and it repeats. Now, I don't know about you, I actually prefer the line notation. Looks a bit nicer, doesn't get confusing. Whoa, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have dealt with two thirds of this lesson already. We're not even seven minutes in. And now we're gonna round decimal numbers. You should already be aware of how to round decimal numbers. If you aren't, then we're about to show you now. Rounding decimal numbers basically just means Let's knock off some of all these massive numbers of digital decimal places. You see how many, look at this. I mean, that's three point and it just goes on and on and on. Now we're not gonna write that as an answer. And so mathematically look for ways to um, reduce and sort of mathematically get rid of a lot of these numbers. You could argue ignore them. And the way we do that is we round to a differing number of decimal places. Now, as I said before, when we looked at 0 0.5, how many decimal places did it have? Well, I told you it had one. Why? Because here is the decimal point and there is one number after the decimal number. 0 0.25 had two decimal places. Why? Because here's the decimal point and there is my decimal. And 0 0.125 again here is my decimal point and there are three numbers after my decimal. So if I want to round to a certain number of decimal places, I want to get rid of some. Firstly, the question has to tell me how many decimal places it wants me to round to. So for example, if I want to round the above number to one DP, what do you reckon DP stands for? Decimal place, absolutely. So I want to round this to one decimal place. The first thing I do is I'm, going to, I'm just going to write some of this number out, 58360. I'm not bothered about the rest of it. The first thing I need to do is locate where the decimal point is. The second thing is I'm going to highlight the first decimal place. Now when I teach this normally, I actually do a dotted line after that first decimal place. Why? Because I'm almost there. There is one thing we now need to do to be able to do this mathematical thing to get rid of the numbers. Well, I can't just ignore them. We need to look at the second number, that number on the other side of the dotted line. Now, if that number is a five or more, then what you do is you add one to the number before it. Okay, so if it's a five or more, you add one to the number before it. Now, is eight bigger than five? Oh yes. So now that means that my answer becomes 3.6. End of. What happens to the rest of the numbers? Oh, bye-bye, sayonara. Not interested, don't care. Mathematically, I have rounded that to one decimal place. Now, don't get confused. I don't add one to every single digit before that dotted line. I add one to the number here, not the three, there. So let's have a look now at rounding to two decimal places. I'll write the number again, 3.58360. There's lots more numbers, 
but I want to two decimal places. So these are my two decimal places. I'm now gonna put a dotted line in here. What do I do now? I check to see whether this number here is five or more. It isn't, so guess what? You don't change the number before, all right? So don't change. So if the number is a zero, a one, a two, a three, or a four, we don't change it. So these numbers now get completely ignored and I just write 3.58. How many numbers do I have after my decimal point? Two, so I've done it to two decimal places. Let's try it to three decimal places. So round to three decimal places. So we've got 3.58360 again. So to three decimal places, we're looking for three numbers after the decimal point, do a dotted line. We're now going to look at this number here. Is it a five or more? Oh yes it is. So what do I do? I take this value here and I add one. So the three becomes a four, the eight stays as it is, the five stays as it is, the three stays as it is, and that's not easy to say, and there we go. Now, a word of warning, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, yes, we need to make sure that we don't make silly mistakes. If I had the number 2.896, for example, and I want to round that to two decimal places, let's follow the rules I said, right, two decimal places. So looking at those two numbers, I draw a dotted line after it. Look at this one here, is it five or more? Absolutely, so I now make this one one bigger, but we have a bit of an issue. If I make nine one bigger, it goes to 10. Well, actually, in that situation, whenever this number here is a nine, I always look at this as two digits and I read it as 89. And if I make that one digit bigger, what does it become? 90, absolutely. So in this situation, to two decimal places, that would become 2.90. You must leave that zero on the end there because the question wants it to two decimal places. Rounding recurring decimals, remember we can also round recurring decimals too. Now if that's the case, we do not need to put the dots or the lines over them. It's not important to us in any way, shape or form. So if I, for example, had uh, 0 0.09090909 and I want to round that to six decimal places, well that's pushing it out a little bit, six decimal places, let's colour in six numbers, there we go. We put the dotted line afterwards and we look at the number after the dotted line, is that five or more? No, it isn't. So in which case, we don't change the number before. And so round it to six decimal places, that would be 0 0.090909. Notice we do not do the line or the dot notation when we're rounding these, okay? Because we're actually just cutting a section of it out. The, the, the notation is only used if you're trying to show someone that the whole uh, number is there. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, terminating recurring and rounding decimals. We are done. Thank you very much for watching. If you have made it this far, leave me a comment and say you made it to the end of the video. I will be seriously surprised because very few people do. But if you can, that'd be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, subscribe if you haven't done so. Uh, let me know you're watching. Uh, another video is loading below uh, of the same series. Um, otherwise, I will look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.